it's unbelievable because there are probably 20,000 cars waiting to go across the bridge. What a bloody organization is that? Up until just a few years ago, Auckland's Harbour Bridge rarely closed. But as commuters will know more recently, it's a very different story. So, who are the decision makers and what goes on behind the scenes? We're at the Auckland Transport Operations Centre to find out. With three and a half thousand cameras across the city, ATOC is quite literally the big brother of Auckland. Those who work here are responsible for ensuring the mega city keeps moving. We've got a lot of key roles, um, whether it's talking to police directly on radio, um, through contractor response, uh, admin tasks, signage, like the big VMS signs that we have on the motorway. You've got to strategize, you've got to think ahead, and then you see the, the result a few steps down the road, just like playing chess. Yeah, so I feel like I'm coming to work to, to play chess every day. But keeping things moving doesn't always align with keeping things safe. In September 2020, wind gusts of up to 127 kilometres an hour caused two trucks to crash near the centre of the bridge in quick succession. It brought Auckland to a standstill and since then the bridge has fully closed more than 10 times. So what's changed? After the bridge strike in 2020, we re-evaluated our matrix to make sure that we were pretty much using uh, international best practice uh, to keep the, that structure and our motorists safe. There are four restriction stages determined by how fast the wind is blowing and in what direction. Wind thresholds are lower for when the wind is perpendicular, in other words a crosswind, and when it's moving alongside it. The stages include speed restrictions, detouring vulnerable vehicles, closing lanes, and then full closure, which is when the wind exceeds gusts of 90 kilometres an hour across, or 105 for oblique. We also bring in our partners, uh, duty engineers, and uh, when that decision is made it's a collaborative approach between a group of people. Um, it's a decision that's not made lightly. Overseeing the roads as far south as Topoa and as far north as Cape Brianga, ATOC plays a major role in not only the day-to-day -day movements, but planning for the future. Critical decisions from traffic light configuration to ramp signals, all made right here. What we do uh, may not have immediate impact on the network. But what we do is more strategic, it's a lot of analysing, strategising and implementing. But the consequences of what we do will usually be seen a few steps down the road. It's a complicated game with moves and counter moves, but one that can be quite rewarding. The buzz of solving a problem and getting the city moving again, it's always a, a really driving factor. I get great satisfaction out of being able to do something for the community. So if, for example, next month I measure it, oh, the traveller's time has been shortened by five minutes and you multiply by the by number of travellers. That gives me great satisfaction out of doing that. With a number of factors constantly affecting the roading network, decision-making metrics here are ever-evolving. Those at the top, driven by ensuring commuters make it home. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. To stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald, click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here. And head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.